Hello, my name's Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of the book Car Electrical and Electronic Systems. What I want to do today in this video is I want to talk about analog and digital signals. Now, you might be thinking, oh my gosh, uh, I understand relays, I understand circuits and switches, but that sounds really complicated. Analog and digital? Well, analog and digital signals are not complex to understand. And once you have in your mind an understanding of what they comprise, you can apply it to a whole lot of different car systems. So it's a really important uh, area to understand and then, of course, to be able to apply. I want to start off by talking about analog signals. An analog signal is one that progressively changes. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, think of the airflow meter under the, the bonnet, under the hood of the car, that measures how much air is going into the engine. It normally has a voltage signal output that you can measure, say, with a multimeter. When the engine is idling, there's not much air flowing into the engine because the throttle blade is nearly shut, and so the voltage output from the airflow meter will be small, maybe one volt. As the load on the engine increases, more air flows through the airflow meter, the voltage output progressively rises. So at full load, it might be 4 volts. At in-between loads, the voltage output is at in-between voltages. It's got an infinite number of variations between those two extremes of very low load and very high load. So an analog voltage or an analog signal progressively changes. And that's the key dimension to always keep in mind when thinking about analog signals. Let's look at another example. This is the pressure sensor from an HKS boost pressure gauge, an aftermarket boost pressure gauge. It's got three connections. It's got a 5 volt supply, it's got a ground return, and it's got a signal voltage output. It measures manifold pressure. As manifold pressure rises, so does the voltage output. And it progressively rises with increasing boost, increasing manifold pressure. It's another example of an analog signal. Let's look at a different type of sensor. This sensor measures ride height in an air suspension car. Again, it's got three wires, uh, ground, voltage supply, and the signal voltage output. As the ride height changes, the signal voltage output progressively changes as well. It's an example of an analog sensor. So if an analog sensor has a progressively changing voltage signal, what does a digital sensor do? Or what does a digital signal do? Compared with an analog uh, signal, a digital signal is very different. In most car applications, a digital signal is either on or off. It has no in-betweens. On or off. Now, you might think, really? What's an example of that? Well, an example of that is something which you're all familiar with, and that's a fuel injector. When we supply power to it, it's on, the pinto opens, fuel sprays out. When we turn off power, it's closed, it's off, no fuel comes out. So we operate a fuel injector with a digital signal, either on or off. It's never at in-between positions, it's either on or off. Now, when we're talking about digital signals, there's two other aspects that we can use to describe their behaviour. How often is it turning on and off? So for example, a fuel injector might be operating uh, when you're going only slowly, engine RPM low, it might be operating 20 times a second. It's turning on and off 20 times a second. Rather than saying times per second, we say 20 hertz. In fact, the old fashioned way of saying hertz was cycles per second, which is an easy way of remembering it. As we go faster in engine speed, the injector will be going faster as well. At a higher speed, it might be operating at 50 hertz, turning on and off 50 times per second. So when we talk about a digital signal, we can talk about the frequency, how often it's going on and off, the frequency of that digital signal. But there's something else we can talk about as well. What proportion of the time is it on? Now, what proportion of the time? Let's imagine we are just an engine idle. We don't need much fuel, so we can turn it on for just a tiny proportion of the time. 
we might have the injector open for only 2% of the time. 98% of the time it is closed. However, as load increases, we're going to have to have that injector squirting for a greater proportion of the time. At high load, we might have that injector open for 75% of the time, closed for only 25% of the time. How much it's opened for as a proportion of time is called its duty cycle. So frequency, how often it's going on and off, duty cycle, what proportion of the overall time is it open for? In this case, the injector, what proportion of the time is it squirting fuel? Now, if you're thinking, oh, I was, I was following until we got to frequency and, and duty cycle, let's take a few steps back. An analog signal is one that progressively changes. A digital signal in a car is typically one that's either on or off, and all digital signals in a car change in steps. If we're talking about an on-off digital signal, like a fuel injector, there are two things we can look at, two things we can use to describe the signal. One is frequency, how many times per second it's going on and off, and one is duty cycle, what proportion of the time is it actually on for. Uh, both of those things, incidentally, we can measure with a good multimeter. We can measure frequency and duty cycle. And as I'll cover in a later video, we can also use an oscilloscope, a scope, to do those things as well. This material is covered in the book. I talk about analog signals. I talk about duty cycle. I talk about uh, frequency. I talk about the whole range of digital, si uh, digital signals that are used, including in things like CAN buses and, and other communication protocols. But the key thing to remember in your head is that an analog signal is one that is progressively changing. A digital signal is typically one that's either on or off and not at any of those in-between positions. Thank you.